My off-grid journey began six and a half years ago on another property in the wilderness, barren desert, white sand desert, north of Santa Clarita, where I bought a shipping container that was cut in half and moved into it, began camping out and building my paradise. I did this by hot composting free horse manure I got from local ranches. And this horse manure I mixed with the white sand of the desert there so that I could grow gardens and fruit trees. I didn't know how to build, so I hired a guy to close off the end of the shipping container and cut a door in the front for me. And as I watched him and learned, I finished framing the end of that door or that wall better. And then I framed the inside and cut out uh, the front myself and added these sliding doors with the help of new friends I met. And I began building just from figuring it out on my own and not really knowing what I was doing, but it all began to come alive as I landscaped and built. I used rocks to create water diversions and native plants that I dug up for windbreaks, and I built a big water diversion in the back that I covered with free mulch I got from the city and rocks that were from the land there. There were so many rocks that I built, gabion walls and gabion columns, and then I covered the ground with mulch so it didn't reflect so much heat and sun. And it all began to turn into my little paradise retreat. Things came alive. I planted a large apricot tree that I got. I planted shaded covered gardens because it was so brutally hot there and enclosed a little garden area to keep the chickens out. And the fruits began to appear. I got apricots and watermelons. And I landscaped with whatever I could find on the property or whatever was free, whatever someone was throwing away or I found. I used it and I built things. And my palm tree really added a nice tropical feel to the whole experience. My chicken coop I built from free wood that I got and I was given some baby chickens that thought I was their mother. <laughs> and everything began to come to life with the gardens and fruit trees. And aloe vera thrived in the hot sun there. It didn't burn. I grew cabbages and other plants underneath the fruit trees because the fruit trees provided shade for those plants. And I also had other garden beds and that I harvested. And I harvested my first chicken. It was a bad rooster. <laughs> and a snake harvested a baby chicken, a rattlesnake. It was the first rattlesnake I'd ever seen. And I became very accustomed to seeing them all the time. And they never harmed my bigger chickens. And my bigger chickens didn't harm them. I had gopher snakes raiding my chicken coop for eggs often. And I even witnessed a rattlesnake putting an injured rabbit out of its misery and swallowing it whole. That was a very National Geographic moment. I planted a pepper tree um, where, that was fed from gray water from my sink and it grew so big and I got solar power just a little bit. I had batteries in this box and I used that for my cell phone and started harvesting the fruits of my labors from this land. I bought a $350 mulberry tree that began producing fruit right away and wildlife just showed up out of the blue and made it very beautiful feeling there. I planted a garden for aloe vera because they didn't burn and they thrived there. And this pepper tree I planted from a twig a year and a half earlier and it was fed by shower water and it just grew like crazy. Uh, my grapes grew and you can see a shipping container in the back that I was given uh, and everything just came alive. I learned a lot about the native plants that were growing in the area and I also planted a mesquite tree that grew taller than me in a very short time and then I landscaped around with brittle bush which is a native plant that I found that required no irrigation and the beaver tail cactus which are edible uh, tobacco wild tobacco and currants and datura which stayed green and lush and I dug a pond uh, to harvest water to keep it from flooding, and it sure did its job. <laughs> and then I got goats, and I put paneling on the front of the shipping container so you couldn't even tell that it was a shipping container anymore. And this was, these were cedar boards, fence boards that I used. 
And once it all became very beautiful and homey, I had to move off this land. And I packed up my little tiny house on the back of a truck and drove away. And as you can see, this large tree in the front is that same tree that I planted just a year and a half or two years earlier from a twig.